What did he get during the interview with Joe Rogan? A course of booze. Why is it that every time we have all these like these little guys fight, especially the last fight I remember, the little guys fight was um, Hannah Burrell um, versus the California kid Uriah Faber. There was some course of booze too, and it happened not too long ago in Canada, if I'm not mistaken too. I mean, seriously. Why is it that all these when these little guys fight and they fight so technical that there's a course of booze? I mean, Dana White may probably have a good point. I mean, if anybody that boos this fight, especially with Demetrius Johnson versus Joseph Benavides, who gave their heart, their soul, and, and their sweat and everything, and tears and everything like that, are you guys really real martial art, mixed martial art fans? Dana White doesn't think so. I mean, Dana White even said something about maybe the fans are looking for more extreme types of fights, like lions and tigers, maybe back in the Roman days. I mean, are we getting to that now? Are we getting to, is it getting to that point where people want to start seeing lions and tigers? And I'm going to tell you right now, I've already talked with some people individually um, about this, and there have been some people that actually want to see lions and tigers and different things like that. I'm like, are you kidding me? A guy versus a lion and a tiger and bears and all that? Oh my goodness. I mean, come on, folks. This was a good fight. I don't know why y'all were booing this about. This is a terrific fight. And, and maybe they know my wife may have a good point. Maybe so many people want to see something more extreme. Maybe they just want to see some sloppy brawling and all this other stuff. But yeah, people, listen. This is MMA. Okay, this is mixed martial. This is combat sports. You're not going to see a bunch of sloppy fights in each and every time. And especially, you're not going to see that from the little guys now. Come on. I'm not going to see it from little guys. So, please people, really reconsider what you're booing about before you start booing, please. You know, this is a great fight. This is an excellent event. And all this bunch of booing is just simply um, tainting this event. But history has been made anyway, whether you guys booed or cheered. So, Demetrius Johnson, great job. Congratulations. You um, first new UFC flyweight champion and I am really proud of you and I and I hope you keep up the great success that you're doing. Despite all the boos, I'm rooting for you and I'm rooting for definitely Joseph and NSC. Great job and great effort. You, I can't wait to see you guys lock horns again. I really can't see it. It was in such a great fight. Forget the boos. Forget the hating. Just, you know, celebrate. So that's the thing. Anyways, now in the main event, another championship fight. UFC Light Heavyweight Championship fight. Um, John Jones as a UFC Light Heavyweight Champion versus a former UFC Light Heavyweight Champion, Peter Velford. And the winner, and still the um, UFC Light Heavyweight Champion, John Bones Jones, via a submission with an Americana um, armbar submission. And in the fourth round, it took that happened. I mean, and in the first round, when it started, of course, John John started with some kicks, of course, like he's always done. Well, not always done, but for the most part, really did it throughout the, the fight. It was throwing side kicks to the knees, and side kicks to the hamstrings, and side kicks to the body. But then when he when he took him down, he basically had, you know, he's always been have this type that always like to grind and patience, and he does those elbows, patience, patience. Pow, throwing elbows, that's how that's what he's really good at. Those elbows are so lethal that he has. I mean, my like, goodness. I mean, he even ended up cutting um, Vita Belfort's right eye, and it was just, just a bloody mess. But then Vita Belfort caught him with an and with the um, arm bar submission from the back, which was even hyperextended his elbow. John Jones held it on, slammed his head, and he kept heading it on for about a good 30 seconds. And John Jones actually got out of it, and actually got on in a mount position again, and all this time he really made him pay with some few more good elbows in the first round. I mean, that's just I mean, Vita Belfort was the first one that nearly had John Jones in so much trouble in the submission hold in that way. And so John Jones may have to take a look at his elbow. He even said that at the very end. But then as as the rounds um, go went along, um, you know, John Jones had the one spin elbow that caught um, Vita Belfort in the head. He side kicked him so hard to the gut that Vita Belfort fell. At, well, he didn't just fall, fell, but he just kind of just slipped, slipped and went to the ground and was trying to, you know, lure John Jones in because he, he he got hurt. I mean, he got hurt with that side kick and those side kicks, and not not just that, but he was actually even manipulating where he was throwing, how he was throwing them. I mean, sure he threw him straight to his knee, 
But he didn't just throw him straight to the knee. He threw him also to the angle, to from to his right, to the side of the knee, to his right knee, um, the right side of his right knee, and also the left side of his uh, right knee too. So he was just manipulating where he was throwing those side kicks everywhere he was doing. And Vita Belfort, on his part, was just staying in front of John Jones, hoping to find some final answer some shots. But you know, Vita Belfort just was just too slow to throw any really good haymakers at him. John Jones kept avoiding and also gave him some good shots and good elbows. But at the very, very end, um, John Jones just kept hatting him down and kept elbowing him. And he even got him to the side control where he had him in the crucifix in the, in the fourth round and was even landing some nice short elbows in the crucifix position and even then grabbed his arm and, and slapped on the Americana, as they call it, um, armbar submission. Not necessarily a Kimura, but an Americana where rather than a Kimura would slap on like this, it was slap on where you had his hand up and then you actually got it to a point where it was extended like this. And so Vita Belfort had no choice but to tap out. He was too exhausted, it was too beaten up. And there it was. Um, John Jones had him in a submission. John Jones, um, you know, would have definitely broken it if, if Vita hadn't tapped. And so now, because of the fact that John Jones was a very proud man and would not have submitted, and he worked too hard to even go out and submit to be submitted like this, now he's going to have his elbow checked. But on Vita, Vita Belfort's part, he's going to have his, he needs to have his knees checked and may even have his ribs checked because he may probably have cracked ribs from the, the sidekick that he's had to the gut. Because I'm going to tell you something, I mean, being a martial artist myself, a lot of people think that, you know, people don't see a lot of sidekicks in MMA because they, because people are afraid of getting their foot caught. If you know how to do a sidekick right, and, and, I mean, sidekicks are very hard to catch, uh, you know, for those who really know how to execute a sidekick, if anything. I've executed sidekicks, and, man, you'd be surprised how many people have fallen down, you know, to the, the, to the sidekicks that I've even thrown or sidekicks that I've seen other people thrown, whether it's to the head or whether it's to the knee or even when it's to the, to the stomach or hamstring. It could really be a a, a, damn, a game changer right there if if you know if a person knows how to throw a sidekick right, it could be a game changer. And John Jones knows how to do it. Guys like um, Anderson Silva knows how to do it. That's why they're the best. They know how to throw sidekicks. And John Jones, a lot of people may say he may have to um, change up his game plan. Folks, listen. John Jones is always changing up his game plan. I, I, so and he's always going to continue to do so. Him and Greg Jackson will have to, oh, well, of course, we'll sit down and talk about it, but they're always going to change the game plan anyway. So it doesn't really matter, you know, what um, a lot of people are going to say. And, and I'm sure, yes, yeah, very nice, not unless on the most light for a lot of controversial reasons, despite all the controversy he's been through, yet he's fighting through adversity. You know what? Come to think of it, he's kind of reminding me now of John Cena, uh, how John Cena is the WWE, where he has some people, some fans loving him and some fans booing him, and it's such a, he's such, such, such a controversial character. What John Cena is in WWE is John Jones of the UFC. A lot of people are saying that John Jones is a prima donna or a diva and all this other shit that they're saying about him, and they're saying he's a spoiled brat and everything. But you know what, John Jones, yeah, he's gotten rich and everything, but he has earned his spot. He's came out, he kicked some ass, he took some names, and guess what? He did it again tonight, and he's still going to continue to do so. So I, I, just because of a couple mishaps that he has had through his DUI, which I don't really feel is an excuse for him to have had a DUI, but then again, you know, he's a very young man, even though he's very advanced for his age, he's still a young man, we've all made mistakes, and I've been a young guy myself before, and I've been his age before, I should know. Um, even though I myself wasn't stupid enough to be drinking and driving, um, but I actually did a couple times one time, but I was also very careful not to be driving, you know, really fast or just basically I drove carefully. But I never made a mistake after that again, even though I was never caught by the cops, thank goodness. Not everyone was as, was as fortunate. And so I can sympathize, oh no, 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 empathize is what I'm getting at with John Jones on about that because I made that stupid mistake too a couple times even though I was a little more in control in my driving. Yet, also too, and then with all this controversy with the Dan Henderson with a torn knee, uh, when he tore his knee, and yet John Jones and Greg Jackson didn't pick the fight with that Shale Sonnen 
um, when he stepped forward. Now, I have a little issue with that. Um, yet, Greg Jackson said no, and so John Jones said no. And you see, there was a lot of controversy with that, and I'm going to tell you why. Because obviously we all know that the UFC 151 was canceled because of the fact that they couldn't find a suitable opponent for John Jones. Shilela Machida wasn't suited for that because he was doing other things. And then Mar Marisha Hua, who knows what happened with that. But Vita Belfort stepped up, and, and rather than, than simply either like making the UFC 151 um, either a, a no title fight and just kept the show going, yet Dana White and the other owners decided to cancel the UFC 151 event. And so John Jones and Greg Jackson did not know the, the ramifications of their decision against Shale Sonnen not accepting Shale Sonnen as an opponent because, let's be honest, Shale Sonnen, they, he only had eight days to prepare for Shale Sonnen and Greg Jackson didn't think it was a great idea. It was a career killer for him just to accept that fight. And so Dana White and everyone else got really angry with John Jones saying that, that John Jones is spoiled bright. He didn't think about the fighters of other fighters that had prepared for the event. Well, first of all, if Dana White would have thought about the fighters, then, I mean, like he said he did, then why did he just cancel the event? Why can't he just cancel the, the title fight itself and move everyone else up, move the event up? You know, or maybe, um, you know, had, or, or maybe just had him versus Vita Belfort at that time. But, but he canceled the event rather than simply letting the event go on without the title fight. So that was, I think that was a really stupid business decision on, on Dana's and the UFC owner's part of that. You know, if I was running it, the, the show would have gone on without the, the title fight. But also, it was another thing that, that happened. Now, a lot of people were saying that, of course, um, John Jones ruined it for the fighters. But here's the thing that people need to know. Now, whether a lot of people know this or not, um, Errol Hawani in, in, in MMA Inside interviewed Dana White and actually pointed out to Dana White, Dana White of course um, admitted it, that Dan Henderson himself should have been partly responsible for this situation. And the reason why I'm saying this is because Dan Henderson knew that he was injured two weeks. He was injured for two weeks with, a to with, with some knee problems. He knew he had an injury, but he kept on going thinking that he was going to come in an event and be healthy. He did not tell Dana White in time. He did not tell Dana White with only in other words, he waited two weeks later for him to tell Dana White that he was injured. I mean, come on, are you serious? So Dan Henderson, on his part, was irresponsible for not telling Dana White sooner about his problem, what about his health issue that he needed to bow out sooner. So let's be honest: if he would have done that sooner, would it have probably made a difference with Greg Jackson and John Jones accepting the fight with Shell Sonnen? Perhaps so. I would, I truly do believe he would have, they would have accepted a fight if Dan Henderson would have been responsible enough to bat out sooner. But even that, and as far as Shell Sonnen is concerned, what business did he have trying to jump in and try to get a, take a light heavyweight championship? He didn't even barely even beat, he didn't even beat Anderson himself in a middleweight championship. So those, those people that don't necessarily win championships that blew it normally fall back in line. And on top of that, when was the last time Michelle Sonnen was a light heavyweight? He hasn't been in there for, for a few years, so he hasn't really done anything in that division to really earn that spot for that. So to me, I thought that was like, wait a minute. You know, I think it was just a bunch of politics I was involved with this because Shell Sonnen, I don't think, deserved a light heavyweight championship against John Jones to begin with. So, you know, there, of course, Shell Sonnen and many other people are going to be crying about this because the fact that John Jones said no and everything. But John Jones and Greg Jackson don't know the ramifications, but they're not going to regret the decisions either. All they can do is learn from them. So, but Peter Belford, on the other hand, has earned a spot. And to be quite honest with you, even though I wasn't sure that Peter Belford was the guy to, to pick, but he is a former UFC light heavyweight champion, whether Shell Shonen hasn't really gotten any time.